Hey guys, it's Paradise, and do you know what the next update for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is and what's going on with it? Well, this next update is the final planned one from Psy Games, and it will be releasing very soon. To not keep us waiting and fiending for more Relink content, Psy Games have given us more details on some of the more gameplay focused changes coming in this new drop. So we wanted to go through all of this new info because some of it is looking pretty spicy, and one of the juicy things that they've announced is that the update version 1.3 will be released on May 31st, which is this Friday. This means we'll be getting our hands on a new quest, an OP looking new character, and more stuff for our builds that should actually mix things up. First though, do humor me and let's play a little game while we're waiting for this update to release. Cygames have said that this is the final planned update, but they also hinted that there may be more to come, and from their past track record, it shows that they are great at supporting their games. However, after 8 long years of development, what do you think their next move will be with Relink? Do you think they will A continue to update the game with new content, B leave it here and move the team onto the next game like Project Awakening instead, or C will they move on to a sequel of Relink? It would be fantastic to know what you think so drop it in the comments so we can look back on the people that were right with those 1000 IQ big brain plays. But for now we have update 1.3 to look forward to and one of the cool new things that's been revealed in this update is some new sigils that look like they will be quite impactful. These new sigils will be Berserker Echo, Spartan Echo and Super Ultimate Perfect Dodge. They each look pretty spicy so here's what they do. Berserker Echo says boosts chance of triggering supplementary damage the higher base attack power is. Supplementary damage dealt by other sources will be added to that damage. Spartan Echo says boosts chance of triggering supplementary damage the higher base health is. Supplementary damage by other sources will be added to that damage. Both of these look very interesting and may become a best in slot trait to have in your build, as we know that supplementary damage is key for pretty much every build to increase your DPS, as this is one stat that basically circumvents the damage cap. I don't know what you guys think, but the description of these skills is a bit confusing at the moment, where the top line makes it sound like it increases the chance of dealing supplementary damage or triggering supplementary damage, while the second line makes it sound like it adds additional damage alongside other sources of supplementary damage. Either way they are definitely trying to mix things up here and we can definitely see that people will probably lean towards Berserker Echo instead of Spartan Echo. Because Berserker is tied to your attack power rather than your health, this makes sense if damage is your focus. On top of this, another issue with the Spartan Echo version is that Terminus weapons basically scale and require your health pool to be capped out at 45k. So we'll definitely need to do some testing to see if this trait scales off of flat health or percentage health. And next is one for the real tryhards out there with Super Ultimate Perfect Dodge. This one will shorten the perfect dodge timing window that will greatly boost your damage cap during the invincibility from a perfect dodge. This doesn't however stack with fight over flight or improved dodge. So if you want to make the combat a bit more spicy and make it harder to pull off those perfect dodges, this could be the sigil for you as it gives you additional damage cap while in that invulnerability window, which is pretty massive as there's so limited ways to get improved damage cap. It's going to be very interesting to see just how much this window is reduced with this sigil, because we can see a lot of people saying that this might be a requirement to get the most damage out of your build, but if you just get wrecked because of that reduced dodge window, and thus die and reduce your overall DPS, then it's obviously not going to be doing very good for you. One of the main concerns though with the community at the moment about these new sigils is the fact that we are running out of slots. There are several comments on Twitter already pointing out that between the alpha, gamma and new character sigils added in the last update, there isn't much room left in our builds. However, there is a new system being introduced in this 1.3 update that could possibly be a workaround for this. In 1.3, there will be a new system called the Sigil Synthesis, and Cygames have recently given us examples as to how this will work. On Twitter, they say, Combine two legendary plus sigils to synthesize a new sigil that will inherit traits from the previous combined trait pool. In the example that we got to see, they combine a Tyranny Plus and a Great Aegis Plus into a low profile plus sigil. The image supplied is very pixelated, but we can see that when they are combining these sigils together, it can take two of the traits off of both sigils and put them into the pool. 
So on the side we can see Tyranny, Low Profile, Greater Aegis and Potion Hoarder listed. This could be a real game changer for those of us that have some stronger sigils and want to mix them together to make a very powerful one. It does say that this works with legendary sigils but there's no word at the moment for character specific and unique sigils like the Alpha and Gamma ones. Another thing that I believe is safe to say we're all excited for is the brand new character Sandolphin and we have been blessed with some extra new footage of him in action. He is looking pretty busted and for those of you who need a lowdown on what to expect, Sandolphin looks like he's going to be a mix of Siegfried, Lancelot and Id all together. He has the perfect time input attacks of Siegfried, allowing him to get boosted damage if executed correctly. He also has a unique dodge mechanic very similar to Lancelot that lets the character remain mobile even while performing attacks. And if that wasn't enough, it looks like there's extra inspiration from Id's playstyle where he has a gauge to fill up that will put him in a transform state called Supreme Primarch Mode, which when you see it in action you can see just how busted his skills look, but that being said, looking busted and being busted are two different things so we're gonna have to wait till we can get hands on and try out this supreme mode. It's also confirmed that Sandolphin will have two different Skybound arts because he has an additional one available to him when he is in supreme Primarch mode. There isn't any solid information on the quests being added into the 1.3 update but we do know that there will be new fate episodes, weapons and main story that will be related to Sandolphin but they have confirmed there will be new proud difficulty and side quests added in. If we had to hazard a guess, we're thinking there could be a new proud difficulty level fight against one of our favourite bosses, Piet A. We think this because it was featured heavily in the reveal trailer for the update and it was a really awesome fight. There's also a bunch of quality of life changes coming in and the new photo mode, so there's quite a lot to look forward to. For now though, we will leave you with the question that we asked earlier at the start of the video to put in the comments below, and if you want to check out Sandolphin in action properly, here is the new gameplay trailer of him. I give us passing marks. Behold, the power of the Supreme Primarch! Catch! Ethereal? Prison! Be gone! Let's finish this quickly. The finale! Uh, uh. Such conceit. I see. Watch yourselves! You're the best. Move out! Perish. How dare you! Let none escape! You got it! We can't rest easy yet, Captain. Understood. Let judgment ring across the land! I'm the four! Grand Blue Fantasy, reeling. 